Hello and welcome back to another episode. Now the sun is shining and I have the whole day to myself to spend up the allotment. So the jobs today will be picking and harvesting the sweet corn. I'll also be harvesting some carrots and some raspberries and I'll be taking some lavender cuttings too. So hello, it's me. <laughs> um, yeah, basically I'm back, back on the allotment, back in the shed, back in the glorious sunshine. Um, but first of all, I just want to apologize for the lack of videos. Um, you could just say I have been, been having a good time. <laughs> no, I've just been a bit busy. I mean, everything's great at the moment. Of course, I've been in Wales. Um, a lot of the time and I've been really busy with work um, because you know making videos isn't my full-time job it's purely a hobby so whenever I do have a spare bit of time I like to make a video to share with you guys you know just to share advice and tips and things so it's not actually my job but I just really enjoy doing it so I do want to apologize for the lack of videos because I think the last one I did was about two months ago um, so yeah, I'm sorry, but I'm back now <laughs> and um, there's a few jobs to do, there's a few jobs to do. The allotment right now is at its tidiest it's ever been and I'm actually a little bit proud of myself. Um, basically I had a visitor a couple of days ago who um, interviewed me and took a few pictures of the plot um, to go in an upcoming article in the Kitchen Garden magazine. Now it won't actually be out until next year, so I will let you all know when it's going to appear in the magazine, uh, just in case you want to buy it and have a peek. Um, but I'm really excited about it. Um, so yeah, before he came, I was up here nearly every night, <laughs> making sure that the allotment was tidy and it looked presentable. Um, so yeah, for once, it's looking great, if I do say so myself. I mean, it's not the best, you know, it's, it's never going to be the best allotment. And, you know, there's certain things that I'd like to change or there's certain things that I'd like to add that would make it look a little bit better. But um, for now, I'm really chuffed with it. And I worked really hard to, to get it up and, you know, looking good. So I hope that the article is going to be good. <laughs> I don't know, I'm really excited to read it. But um, yeah, the, the allotment, you know, it doesn't need much work on it now. There are a few small jobs that I want to do um, because I'm off to Wales again, you know. <laughs> I don't know if you could guess, but yeah, I'm off to Wales again on, well, tomorrow. So um, I want to pick the sweet corn because it's ready to harvest and I don't want to leave it too long because it will start to go off. Um, so I'm going to pick all the sweet corn today and I'm going to take some with me to Wales but I'm also going to freeze the rest because my dad's also growing sweet corn so we're going to have a massive massive glut of sweet corn soon. So yeah I'm going to, going to strip all the kernels off, blanch them and freeze them in bags so we can use them throughout winter. Um, so I'll talk a bit about the Free Sisters method which I was experimenting with this year because I don't think I've talked about it much. Um, and I'm also going to harvest some carrots, harvest some raspberries, and I need to take some lavender cuttings. So yeah, there's little jobs that need to be done. Some jobs that I've been putting off, like the lavender cuttings. Um, and it's nice, you know, I've got all day on the allotment. And it's, it's actually nice to come up here and not be faced with like a pile of weeds or, or not be faced with a messy, messy plot. So um, it's nice. I can actually take my time today <laughs> and you know 
maybe sit a bit in the sunshine, have a cup of tea and just relax a bit. So yeah, it's good. Life is good. <laughs> um, so I think first things first is I'm going to take some lavender cuttings uh, because now is the idle time to take cuttings and I want to save a bit of money but I also want some lovely lavender so um, yeah, I'm going to take some cuttings first I think. Let's just get everything ready. Pop. No. So I'm finally getting around to taking some lavender cuttings. It's something I've been meaning to do for a while now, but I've just been struggling to find the time. Um, but it's the beginning of September and it's the ideal time to take cuttings. So that's what I'm doing today. And because basically the idea is to create a small lavender hedge coming into the flower patch. So really I need roughly about five more lavender plants. Now instead of going to the garden center and you know, spending a small fortune on lavender plants because they can be quite expensive. I thought I'd just take some cuttings from the two bushes that I have already and um, basically save some money because it's very easy to do. So I'll just talk you through it quickly. So I have some 10 centimeter pots. I've just filled them with some multi-purpose compost. So when you take your lavender cuttings, you need to use the side shoots of your plant and carefully pull them away from the plant. Now, make sure that you have a piece of the bark or the heel still attached to the cutting. So when you pull or peel them away from the lavender plant, you can get a nice flap of bark right on the end. Now, if you don't get a flap of bark, then you can simply use a sharp knife and cut at an angle um, because this is where the roots will come from. So once you have your lavender cutting, just pull away the bottom pairs of leaves because you need a nice clear area to go into the soil. And then you get your pot and some rooting hormone powder. Make a small hole round the centre of the pot and dip the lavender cutting into the rooting hormone powder. This will just help to protect it and give it more of a chance of rooting. And then all you do is put that in the pot and carefully push the soil down around it. And that is one done. So after you've done that, you can fit about five or six lavender cuttings around the edge in one pot. So here's one I done earlier and there's five cuttings around the edge there. And then all I did was put a clear polythene bag on the top and I secured it with a piece of twine. Now the polythene bag will just help to create a nice humid atmosphere for the cuttings. Now they would take roughly four to six weeks to root. Um, but once it's been about six weeks, you can cut the corner off of the bag for a bit of ventilation. And then after a few more weeks, you can remove the bag completely. And once they have completely rooted and you're happy with them, you can put them on individually. And then hopefully we'll have lots of lovely lavender plants. Fingers crossed anyway. But what I've done is, well, I'm going to put up three pots just as a sort of fail safe. I really only need five lavender plants, but of course, if I get any more, then that's even better. Um, but obviously some of them won't root um, and some of them will die. So by planting more, you just give yourself a little bit of an option just in case. It's like when you're sowing seeds, you know, you, you always sow a few extras just in case. Um, but that's it, it's that simple. So um, I'm just gonna finish up putting these two. And then I think I'll pick the sweet corn because it's all ready to harvest.
So I'm just harvesting my sweet corn now because it's ready to harvest now. The main telltale sign is the the tassels on the end which have turned a really dark brown and they're nice and crispy now so they are ready to harvest. Now I harvested a couple the other day um, and I mean I've got the same problem with all of them I think which is the fact that the kernels at the top inch or so um, haven't pollinated so um, I think next year I'm either going to have to make sure they're pollinated by shaking them a bit more or um, or plant them closer together really but I mean the bottom bit is just beautiful so I'm, I'm really pleased with them I mean it's my first year growing sweet corn so I'm chuffed um, but uh, the three sisters have has been a little bit of a disappointment <laughs> I mean the sweet corn's done really well um, the beans I mean I got one huge harvest from the beans but then I didn't pick them regularly enough and they died so there's no beans on there now and the squash is very slow at growing there's a tiny tiny squash appearing now but I don't think it's going to be ready in time uh, so what I'm going to do is when I've finished picking the sweet corn is pull the sweet corn up pull the bean vines up and then just let the squash grow because hopefully I get a squash from there but um yeah it's been a little bit of a disappointment but it was my first year so I'm just going to finish picking the sweet corn and I'm going to go home and freeze it so I'm just going to take the kernels off, plant them, and then put them in bags in the freezer. So hopefully we'll be eating sweet corn throughout the winter. Is there any more? Over oh, there. have been a little bit funny for me this year. Um, I previously sowed some 95 carrots in this space uh, middle of April um, but they were a complete and utter no-show. I think that was due to it being too cold and too wet and the seeds just rotted in the soil. Um, so after they didn't appear I sowed some a uh, well, new variety for me called Romance um, which is an F1 hybrid variety and they came up beautifully as you can see the foliage is just lovely. Now one thing I didn't do with my carrots this year and what I usually like to do most years is cover them up to protect them against carrot fly. Now what I usually do is put a um, like a mesh barrier around the carrots which is about a meter high because carrot fly can't fly higher than a meter. Um, so yeah this year I didn't do it I just forgot to and then I just thought oh well it's too late to put it on now. Um, so part of me was thinking oh, I'm going to pull them up and they're just going to be riddled with carrot fly but they've actually been great you know they haven't been the biggest or the straightest or the most perfect looking carrots but you know they're delicious and they've uh, they've just done really well so um, I've been pulling them up every now and again for when we want them for tea I've taken about three harvests from them so far so I'm just going to pick some more again for some supper tonight. So um, I'd still try and pick the biggest carrots um, just because it's still warm. It's still, you know, hot enough for the carrots to grow. So um, any of the smaller ones can just continue growing. So let's try and find some. Now I use a hand fork just to help ease them up. Obviously you need to be careful that you don't get the carrots. So there's one. Like I said, they're not the biggest. You know, they're not the longest or the straightest, but they are homegrown. They are mine. And they are delicious. And really, that's all that matters. In fact, that is all that matters. You know, I don't believe in this whole supermarket thing of, 
you know, not putting carrots on the shelf that don't look like carrots. It's just a little bit ridiculous. So let's see if there's any bigger ones here. There's a nice looking one. So I'd take about six for supper. And that will do us for our little mini roast today. Here's a funny looking one. See, a part of me loves it when I pull up ones that look like legs. <laughs> And also the thing is, you know, if you've got two carrots with a bite of one there, <laughs> it doesn't put me off them at all. Let's pick a couple more. And that'll do. And done. That'll be perfect for something. the raspberries yet again are doing really well now this variety is called autumn bliss so they're just starting to come into their own now um, over the past few weeks I've been managing to take a handful home each time which you know even though it's been great you know it, it has its downsides just because they never make it home that way <laughs> they're so delicious that I just scoff them right here and because there's never been you know that much of a crop to take home I just thought oh, I'll just eat them here <laughs> So yeah, it can be a little bit dangerous, um, but it would be nice to, you know, one day hopefully have enough raspberries to make jam with, because I really like raspberries and I really like jam, but um, so far they're not making it home. But I'm determined to take these home um, and maybe have them with some yogurt or some ice cream, because they're delicious with vanilla ice cream. So there's actually quite a few here to pick. Now you know they're ready to pick when they just come off of the stalks really easily. You never want to force raspberries off the stalks. That one's gone a bit over. I've actually wasted a few raspberries this year because where I'm actually standing was completely covered with weeds. I mean it was like up to my hip and the two gooseberry bushes you couldn't see because they were just covered in grass. Um, so before the interview uh, the other day I came up here to completely weed the raspberry cage um, because it also meant that I couldn't get to the raspberries uh, so a few of them went a bit yucky um, but now I mean it's clear it's looking good I can reach over to the other side to get raspberries over there so it's all good um, it just shows you that you know you need to keep on top of your weeding otherwise your crops can suffer um, but there's quite a few here to pick so I'm just going to keep picking them but I want to say thank you for watching and I promise it won't be that long until another video is uploaded but thank you for watching and I will see you all next time.